um, and you got school tomorrow, I guess most of you do. And uh, so we're going to get right into the scripture. John, the book of John, chapter number 6. That's St. John we're looking at here. Uh, John chapter number 6. And uh, I would like to read some scripture here. Statement by the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 27. John chapter 6, verse 27. The Lord said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth. And he's not just talking about a hamburger or something, but life, the things of life. But for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What signs showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? Or what dost thou work? Our fathers did eat man in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is what? He that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. He's saying, you need this life way more than you need a physical meal of food. So I want to preach tonight on this subject, why young people need Jesus. You need the Lord tonight, every one of you. You need him bad. As a matter of fact, you need the Lord more than you need anything else. Really, you do. You may not think that. You may think, well, I need this, I need that. As a matter of fact, they said not long ago, somebody did some kind of survey, and they asked all these young people what they stressed about. Because, oh, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. They just throw it around like it's nothing, you know. If a red light turns around, you have to stop your stress. Um, but uh, they, they asked them, and they said these things is what young people really worry about all the time. They said physical health, that the way you feel, not being sick. Mental health, some of you done lost that battle. School, 70% of young people worry a lot about school, grades and stuff. Body image, like how do I, do I look, do I look, I look okay, I'm ugly, I, my nose is crooked, I'm fat, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, y'all, y'all think that's the most important thing in the world, and it's not, it's not. Family problems, 87% of young people worry about their family. Mom and dad and fussing and fighting and things like that. And then money, uh, are we going to have enough money to pay the bills? Are we going to get kicked out of our apartment? Or, you know, stuff like that. And out of those six things, the Lord was not on that list. Not, not eternal life. No, you know what the most important thing you ought to be thinking about? Knowing you're saved. The two greatest things in life are, number one, be saved and know it. Number two, be in the will of God and know it. You don't get any more important than that. Your body image, your, your money, your, your looks, your, your car, your house, your grades, nothing can even come close, and I'll show you that tonight, why I'm saying this, than being right with God. There is nothing in the world more important than you being right with God. Nothing, nothing. So I want to talk about that a little bit tonight. And young people need you. You know, we're living in a generation that thinks we don't need anything. We, we, people, they, well, we have, um, uh, we have uh, uh, penicillin, you know, to, when we get sick. And we have medicines. We don't need prayer anymore. We have uh, positive thinking. Uh, we don't need salvation anymore. We just think everything's all right. We have uh, uh, the state to take care of us. We don't need a church anymore. We have science uh, to give us the answers of life. We no longer need the Bible. We have Einstein and great minds like that. We no longer need Jesus. But that's not true at all. You definitely and do 
absolutely need the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when I say you need Jesus, I'm not talking about the Jesus the world throws around out there and said, I had a Jesus moment, some uh, disrespectful fool thing like that. I'm talking about the real Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, God's Son that I preached about this morning that died on the cross for your sins. That's the Jesus I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Jesus Christ superstar. I'm talking about Jesus the bright and morning star. I'm not talking about Jesus that come to, uh, to turn you on. I'm talking about a Jesus that come to turn you around and give you a brand new life. I'm not talking about uh, a Jesus that come to get you high like the hippie uh, crits talk about. I'm talking about a Jesus that come to make you low. You can humble yourself and get right with the Lord. So I want to preach about why you need Jesus. Uh, three, two or three things right quick. First, you need the Lord for courage and protection. You need the Lord for, for guts, brother, uh, to, to, to face life like it is. Uh, you know why a lot of people, young people commit suicide? They don't have the courage to face what, what life throws at them. And they don't, I'm up here. Uh, uh, listen, they don't have the courage to face life like, like what, throws, uh, what, what it throws at them. They, they are afraid, really, just afraid. That's why you got to have somebody with you all the time, scared to death. And it shouldn't be that way. You know, in the, in the Bible, there's all kinds of, of situations like that. David and Goliath. David, just a young boy, just a young boy. They say that he was 17. How many 17 year olds we got in here tonight? There's one, two, three, four, five, uh, several. 17 year old. 17 years old. And David went out there that day, and uh, me and Frank tells this story, boy, and he's got it down pat. And there was a big old crowd of people over here on this side, and they was the Israelites. And there's a great big valley down between them, like this right here. And there's another crowd of people over here, and their name was Philistine. Them was good guys, them was the bad guys. And they was over there scared to death, just like Christians are today, afraid. About that time, some big smart aleck uh, popped up there. His head uh, would touch the, top of that light, the bottom of that light right there. And his hand was that big around. His arm right here was about that big. And he come out there and he said, Hey, come over here, you bunch of chicken. Uh, come over here and fight me. And none of them would. None of them would fight him. They were afraid. Now, that's where you are right now. That's school. This is you. That's the world. That's the movies. That's TV. And this is you. That it's hard to face without the Lord. You need Jesus to have courage. You know why a lot of young people get on drugs? You know why young people drink the first time? Because they're scared to turn it down in front of their friends. Absolutely right. You don't drink the first time because you want to. You drink because you're out with somebody and they do it and you're afraid to say no because you're afraid they're going to think you're a chicken or you're a weirdo or something like that. You're afraid to. That's your problem. You don't have courage. I mean, I was like that when I was young. I never did drink or anything. I took a sip or two like that when people put it up in my mouth like that. And I just, I, I mean, just wet my lip. But I want to spit it out. Uh, but it wasn't because I had a break. Listen, let them, let them offer me one now. <laughs> uh, amen. I ain't had nobody offer me a beer in a long time. Wonder why. I think they know what I'd say, brother. I'd pour it on, throw it in their face. Uh, but uh, listen, you hear me tonight. Uh, you, you're, you're afraid. So Goliath said, come on over and fight me. Hey! And they, and, and they said, uh, oh, Saul, who's going to fight him? What are we going to do? He said, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm the king. I can't. I might get hurt. I, you need me, don't you? And, and I better not fight. And this one wouldn't fight. And this one wouldn't fight. And that one wouldn't fight. And uh, and about that time, here come a little Frankie, a little David, uh, down down the, down the road. And here he come. And he come down through there. And he go. Y'all know this song? Only a boy named David, only a little brook, only a little boy named David, and five little stones he took, you know that. All right, he came down through there, and he, he said, what's going on, y'all? What's going on? They said, shh. He said, what, I got to be quiet. Oh, look, look over there. And Goliath went over our boy, and he, he went like that, and he went, sup? You know, and, uh, and, and David said, who is that idiot? Can he talk English? And they said, don't say nothing. You'll offend him. He'll kill every one of us. We got, we got to have, we got to have. And David said, did you hear him? He cussed. He cussed God. He cussed God. He cussed. Was he a rapper or something? And they said, shh, be quiet. Be quiet. We 
you cannot do that. He'll kill every one of us. And David said, let me go over there and take care of him. Hey, I ain't no sense in him acting like that. They said, no, David. No, David, you don't understand. We're past all that fighting and stuff. There'll never be another war. Uh, we're going to take up uh, at our next summit, world summit meeting, we're going to take up how to have dialogue with the Philistines. And we're going to learn to understand them and accept them and, and love them. And who knows, they may be right and we may be wrong. David said, man, you guys have been watching CNN. Uh, you're, you're perverted, man. There's something wrong with you. Uh, you, don't, you don't say that about the enemies of the Lord. He cussed God, man. He cussed God. And they said, shh, be quiet. And he said, let me go get him. And they put a big old sword on him like that. Saul's armor, he couldn't even walk. <laughs> he put that on him. He come over there like that. And he said, I ain't, can't fight. Get this junk off of me. I ain't proved it. And he went down there. And what did he do, Frank? He got five of them, didn't he? He got five of them, didn't he? He got one, two, three. Four, five, put them in his, in his pocket like that. reason he got five, he wasn't planning on missing. He knew that dude had four brothers, and he did. And, uh, and there's his sons. For further information, see the National Enquirer. And, uh, they, uh, uh, and they, he, he come out there like that, and he said, Hey, you run your mouth about God? And he said, Well, cut my legs off and call me shorty. Who in the world is that? Is that the best you got over there, Saul? He said, what in the world is that little runt coming out here trying to fight me? And David said, let me tell you something, big boy. You better shut your mouth because the Lord going to put you to bed with a shovel today. You hear me? Uh, you ain't never coming up to the judgment day uh, when your body comes out of there and you get cast in the lake of fire. And he said, well, I'll tell you one thing. The boy's got guts. Got to give it to him. And he said, now you going back home. I'll make hamburger meat out of you, and I'll feed your flesh to the, to the, to the birds and the birds and the fowls of the air. And David said, let me tell you something. He said, I was out there keeping my daddy's sheep. And he said, a bear, a bear come out of the woods all the way from Gatlinburg. And he come out there and he said, my, my, he looked out there and he seen my, my daddy's sheep and he grabbed one of them and he had it in his mouth. And he said, the spirit of God come on me. He said, I grabbed that bear. I popped him in the nose like that. I went, boom, hit him with my elbow like that and knocked him off down the cliff and he died. And he said it wasn't long, but the day after that, a lion come out, a lion. I mean, a real one, like they got at the zoo. And he come out and, and he got one of my daddy's sheep and he was going to kill him. He said, the Spirit of God, come on me. And he said, I, he said, I'll grab him like this. I grabbed his beard. I punched him in the eyeball. I karate chopped him, jujitsu, pop, pop, knocked him, and he died. And he said, I'm telling you, the Lord did delivered me out of the hand of the lion and out of the hand of the bear and the same God will deliver me out of the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine that has defied the armies of the living God. He went, boy, I tell you, if I had a bunch like that, we could take India or Africa or Japan or anywhere. And, and, and he come out, he said, prepare to meet God, son. I hope you got some good insurance because your wife's going to need it. And buddy, he, he, looked, he looked at him and he had a big old sword like that. David reached down, put one of them. This is you. That's the drug dealer. This is you. See? That's the guy trying to get you to go to the dance. This is you. This is the girl trying to mess you up, that's you. Got it? That's the guy with the beer, that's you. And David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. What do you think about that? He said, I may be little, but I got a big God. And he put one of them stones in that sling, and buddy, he came out there, he done like that. That's what me and Frank did. And it's like a weed here. And he slung that rock, but it was like a guided missile. Hit him smack dab right there between the eyeballs. Smack dab is a Greek word, a Hebrew word you kids don't know. It means in the midst. And it hit him right there in the eye, between the eyes. And he staggered around there a little bit like that. That thing sunk in his forehead. You got to throw a hard lick with a rock. It sunk in his forehead. And buddy, he went, bow, bow. On his face, they about had a heart attack. They jumped up and shouted. David run, took his own sword. That's what I'm going to do in a minute. Take the, the, the devil's sword and cut him with it. And he took his sword all like that and goes, whack. And whack's another Greek word. It means he severed his head from his body. And he took it off like that right there. And he held up that old bloody head. It was about that big around. Blood running down there. And they shouted and won the victory. And I'm going to tell you what. That's exactly what you kids need when you go to school. That's what you need when you go out, out in the world. You need some... And, 
intestinal fortitude. That means guts uh, for, for nice people. And, and buddy, you need to make up your mind by the grace of God. Jesus is with me. I don't need your drugs. I don't need your parties. I don't need to get high. I don't need that. I've got Jesus. That's why you need him. That's why you need him. I was preaching over in Swannanoa years and years and years ago. And I mean, I was probably, I guess I probably wasn't 20, maybe 21 years old. And a guy got me in over, he said, man, them kids got to hear you preach, Brother Danny. And there was a juvenile home, juvenile center in Swannanoa. It's still there, but I don't think it's like, it was about half as big as about these two sections right here. And they brought them kids in there that night, boys and girls. And there's 14, 15, 16, 17. And there's in there for everything you can imagine, trying to burn houses down, kill their mama, all kind of stuff. And, and they, was, they was all in there, and they come in there that night like a mob. They were pushing, they were laughing. They made the girls sit on one side and boys on the other, and they were like this. They were sitting up here like this and had their feet down here like, like where you're supposed to sit, like that, and, and laughing and cutting up. And I said, oh, my goodness. I mean, I wasn't like 19 or 20. And I said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help me, oh, Lord. And they said, now we have this young man from down in Marion. He's going to come and preach. Come on, uh, Brother Castle. I sit up there and I open my Bible. And I'd never preached a crowd like that before. My goodness. I was used to, I'd been preaching in a few churches where everybody listened and they were respectful. This crowd was talking and like, yeah, what will this babbler say? You know, stuff like, like they did in the Bible. And uh, who, who's that? Who's in? And I got up there and I started preaching. And the more I preached, the, the little bit more better I felt. And boy, the next thing I knowed, I was feeling like the Lord was helping me. And the next thing I knowed, I was cutting loose. And the next thing you knowed, I'd done in full fourth gear, uh, like I'm getting in here tonight. And the next thing I knowed, I was preaching up a storm, and I, and, and I had their attention. They was listening. I said, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. God, do a work here tonight. And I said something about smoking pot. I said, you're not supposed to smoke pot. It ain't right. God didn't right. And boy, oh, boy. They went, no. And there was a girl about 15 over in this middle section raised her hand. Right when I was preaching, she jumped in and said, I want to ask a question. I said, uh-oh. Because that's just not something you do right in the middle of preaching like that. You know, you just sit there. And if he says something you don't like, talk to him after church or something like that. You know, you don't just interrupt somebody preaching. I said, oh, my goodness. She's over there raising her hand. I want to ask a question. So I looked over this way and preached for a minute. I thought, well, maybe she'll sit down, get the hand. I come back around. There she was. She said, I want to ask a question. I said, oh, Lord. I don't know what to do. It's hard to preach and think and make decisions all at the same time in front of a mob like that. And the Lord, I said, oh, my goodness. And she asked again. Finally, I just stopped. And I said, yes, ma'am, what would you like to say? She said, if God didn't want us to smoke pot, why did he let it grow? And every one of them kids looked at me and said, yeah. I said, oh, my goodness. I shot up one of them little Nehemiah prayers. It takes a half a second to get from here to heaven and back. And I said, oh, God, oh, God. And before I, it popped out of my mouth, I said, well, God made poison egg too, man, but that don't mean you're supposed to go out and roll around in it. And I said, God made rattlesnakes. That don't mean you're supposed to kiss them in the mouth. And all them kids looked at her and said, yeah. <laughs> I said, thank God. And you know, the Lord got in that thing that night, and we, I don't know how many got saved. We probably had 80 or 90 in the altar that night getting right with the Lord. And you know what all kids need to realize? You need to realize you need Jesus. You need the Lord. You need the Lord. I think it's so sad. It's so sad when there's so many. Did you know that suicide is between 18 and 20 is like 24 is like the second leading cause of death? Two New Jersey high school students not long ago jumped out of a building to their own death to try to get people's attention, saying there wasn't nothing to live for and stuff like that. It happens all the time. And I'm telling you tonight, you don't have to live like that. I, it's a shame that you got healthy people who really, really, really want to live. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, want to live in their uh, 60 and 70 and ain't got their health. And you got healthy teenagers that want to die. 
Listen, kids, no, you don't need to think about suicide. If suicide ever enters your mind, you can mark it down. God didn't put it there. That was the devil that put it in. And we'd all probably be surprised. We'd probably all be surprised. Truth is known. How many kids sitting right here tonight? You get down, you break up with your boyfriend, you have trouble with your in-laws, stepmom, dad, whatever, uh, and you start, I'll just, just kill yourself. Just, just end it all. And this is very, very real. Very, very real. I, I, knew, I knew a girl who was 15 years old. Uh, she had had some trouble at school, couldn't keep up with her grades. Her and her boyfriend broke up. She had had a problem at school. One morning she went out on the, on the carport to get, catch the bus for school and, and got her daddy's gun out of the, out of the uh, house and, took it and blew her brains out. 15 years old. Everything in life ahead of her. Now the devil will get you down so that you think there's no everything's done. It's, there's nothing to live for. He'll tell you that. He'll make you think, he'll make you think this, all you got is just what's right in front of you at the moment. He won't let you see down the road where it all works out. And it's so sad and so pitiful. Wes, get me, uh, get me them uh, lights there and I'll try to get a picture here. Let's take just a minute here and let me show you what, what happened. Uh, when young people feel like there's nothing to live for. They feel like there's nothing to, to exist for. Like there's no reason to live. Let's look at this, just about two minutes of this, and I want to show you something here tonight. Watch this. Make sure I got volume on the blue one. Suicide the third. Twenty percent of teenagers. Hundred thousand young people. Girls will more than likely try pills by overdosing or cutting themselves. And the devil tells them they have nothing to live for. It's common among young teenage girls to take pills. Boys are more likely to choose another method, which is a gun or jump off of a building. And the devil gets you to the edge and he keeps talking to you and talking to you and you think, I don't have anything to live for. How sad. Look at this. My Lord, think about that. Now think about this tonight. You can get them, get them back off now if, if, you, don't, if you want to. Look at this tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Give me lights on, please. Uh, the devil will get you to the edge and push you. And he'll make you think your mom and daddy don't care. The kids at school don't care. The Lord don't even care. Why don't you just end your life? Show them. Let them see how it feels. Hurt back a little bit. I'm going to tell you, the Lord don't want that. He'll give you the courage to face life. Can I say this to y'all tonight? Everything in life don't always go easy. Life's hard. And if you keep living, it's still going to be hard. It never smooths out where everything goes your way. There's always going to come disappointments. There's always going to come uh, things that don't work out like we want them to. That's why you need Jesus. You need the Lord. You see, when, when your boyfriend breaks up with you or something like that, Lord have mercy. You can just say, well, I got Jesus. It don't matter. And make it through. You don't want to die. If, in, if there's a voice telling you to hurt yourself, that's not God. Don't do it, young people. Don't do it. Just say, I've got Jesus. I don't need that. I don't need that drug. I don't need that uh, gun or that knife or any way to hurt myself. I don't need that. I've got Jesus. I never have understood why, especially girls, I, I don't know what, I don't know, thank God, how girls think. I don't want to know how girls think. I want to be a girl. But they, they get all tore up. I, this girl used to live down below me, right down at the bottom of the hill. Carrie knows what I'm talking about. And she was 19 years old. And she worked at night. And one day, I was up at my house. I live up here on a hill. You go straight down my driveway, it's like that. Then around down there, or the trailer where her and her mom lived. She called me one day. She said, Daddy, Daddy, oh, oh, oh. I said, Debbie, what is wrong with you? 
She said, Danny, can you come down here? Please, can you come down here right now? I said, what in the world? She said, there's a mouse. There's a mouse. It's in here. I said, it ain't going to hurt you. She said, can you come down here and kill it? Can you come down? I said, it'll be all right. She said, please, please. Then I said, she's 19 years old. So I got out of the house, walked down the driveway. I walked up, went in the front door of the trash. She was like, like this on the couch. She said, it's in here. It's in. I said, where's it at? She said, oh, no. I said, Lord, I don't know where it's at. So I got the broom. And I, I took the broom and I started, you know, jabbing up under the couch, you know, and everything. Sure enough, buddy, it wasn't but a minute that thing went across the floor. She went, ah! And I was chasing it through the floor going, bam! I was hit, trying to hit it with that broom. And I hit it, and I, and I hit it. And it, it didn't kill it. It was laying on the floor going, Hoo. one leg like that. And I, I said, I got him! I opened the front door. She's terrified. And I took the broom and just swept him out in the yard. I said, you all right now? She said, And ladies and gentlemen, I walked out and I walked back up my driveway. While I was walking up my driveway, I thought thereon and whereby and wherewithal and received instruction under the sun like Solomon did. Because I'd seen back then, big old Camaro, big Camaro would pull up in her yard. That thing had tires on about that wide on the back and it's jacked up. Going downhill everywhere he went, like that. And he pulled in that yard and go, rawr, rawr. some big old thing, had big old hair sticking way out here like that, nasty looking old mess. And she, on purpose, willingly, would get out of that trailer and walk out there and get in the car of that thing. I said, that is a messed up woman there. That's crazy. That's crazy. She'd scream at a mouse Climbing a car with a wolf. You know what you call that? Not smart. I could say worse words than that. that you, your brain ain't functioning right, girl. And let me tell you, girl, something. There's a lot of things in this world more important and better than having a boyfriend. Say amen right there. Tell them, old women. Listen, I'm going to say something to you. Say, Lord, if I'd, have, if I'd have had it to do over, I'd wait till I was 20, 21, 25, whatever. Well, you're in such a hurry. Just chill out and quit watching them movies and, them, and listen to that music that makes you so full of lust. You take the first nerd that comes down the street and get your heart right with God and say, God, I'm going to wait on you. There's more important things than that. All God's people say it. You need Jesus. I thought about John Lennon this week. When I was a kid, the Beatles were popular and everybody, and John Lennon wrote that song, Imagine There's No Heaven. It's easy if you try. Imagine there's no heaven. You know, sound like he's about half drunk. Easy if you try. No hell below us. Only earth and sky. John Lennon standing outside that apartment in New York City that day found out that there is a hell and that there is a heaven. The Bible's true. He was shot, I think, in the back several times. And John Lennon cussed the Lord. I mean, he was a wicked, wicked, evil man. Maybe if he got saved last minute, praise God, I hope so. We don't know. But he was a very, very evil person. They're the first ones that publicly started cussing, talking about God and, and knocking down Jesus. And all the other bands from then on took their example and said the way to get rich and famous is cuss that Bible and Jesus and God. And that's why they're all doing it today. We've all been made aware of this little twerp, Nos, who's a pitiful little loser wanting attention so bad that he has to cuss God to get it. That's a sad way to have to live. I bet I got on my phone 10 people sent me that yesterday. You know what? Y'all know what I'm talking about. All the kids that come in here talking about it tonight. It's coming out tomorrow. Little Nas. It's so ugly and so pitiful and so untalented that he'll do anything to get attention. So what he's doing is he's, he's made this video and they got these Nike put out Satan shoes. Have y'all seen them? 
Everybody's seen that? It's all over the internet. It's gone completely crazy this weekend. They made Satan shoes. They're only making 666 pairs of them. I got this yesterday on my phone from day. Texas, uh, Virginia, Florida, Tennessee, and a bunch from North Carolina just yesterday. Those shoes will have 666 on them, and they said each shoe has a drop of human blood in the soul. Now, why would you put human blood in a soul? Don't you think that's rather strange? And did you know what, ladies and gentlemen? People worship that. He, he is targeting young kids. That's his main audience. He had a thing back in December that 33 million kids took part in and watched. The shoes sell for $1,018 a pair. The reason that is 1018, and it's got it on there, Luke 10, 18, wrote on the shoes. Luke 10, 18 says, Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And he got, he's jealous of Steph Curry. Steph Curry put that part of a verse on his tennis shoes. I can do all things, but Steph Curry chickened out. He wasn't man enough to put the whole thing on it. So he ought to put, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. He had a little bit of guts. He put a half a verse on there. But let's put on there, I can do all things through Christ, brother. If you're going to tell it, that's how you can do all things. And you know what? Little Nasi is so jealous of Jesus that he makes his own tennis shoes because he's so jealous and begging for somebody to look at him and give him attention that he puts these shoes out and people are going, why why would you put human blood inside of a shoe and call it Luke 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven and the shoe box says it's better to reign in hell than to rule in heaven or serve in heaven. Let me tell you something, kids. That's a lie. It is not better to reign in hell. It's better to serve in heaven. Yes, sir. He has appeared on Disney shows. He's been on the Kids' Choice Awards. And you parents better really be careful what you think your kid. It ain't like it used to be when kids' shows were kids' shows. They're openly, blatantly trying to deceive your child and take them to hell. They need Jesus for satisfaction in life. Jimi Hendrix didn't get it. Janis Joplin didn't get it. I got a list of rock singers that long that thought, I'll be famous, I'll be happy. Did you know the average young person, if you could come to them and say, listen, I'll make you famous, you can become a movie star, you can be on TV, they'd say, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, what have I got to do? You know what, if you're smart, you'll say, look, I got the Lord. If that's not what the Lord wants me to do, I'm happy like I am, I'm satisfied like I am. You say, Brother Danny, you ain't telling me, I sure am. I mean, if they, if they walked in that door there tonight and said, Danny Castle, uh, we got a part in a movie we want you to play and it don't honor God and everything and we'll pay you a million dollars. I'd say, bye-bye, I got better things to do. I mean that. You think I'm lying. I'm not. You know why? I'm satisfied with Jesus Christ. We don't need this world's approval. We don't need their stamp. It'll take you the wrong way anyway. Don't need it. I've asked people, I've asked people, what is the absolute happiest time of your life? And I've had people over and over and over and over and over say to me, when they're 30 and when they're 40 and when they're 50, I've had them say this. Now listen to me, I ain't ain't lying, y'all. They said, the happiest time in my life is when we was all together in the youth group and we was right with God and we was all serving God together. You better listen to that. You better listen to that. Don't you say... Ooh, I don't like church. I'm going to go party tomorrow night. I don't like some things he said. Because, you know why? Because you're wanting to live wicked. You want to live wicked. If you was right with God, you'd say, nail it, preacher. Tell it. Brag on the Lord. Don't. We're not for the Lord's enemies here tonight. We're for him. We're, not, we're against his enemies and for him. Amen? That's right. So you listen. Kids die without the Lord. So many young people. 
I heard the story of a young man. And this young man, he got into all kind of stuff. You kids, they got, the devil has all this stuff, creepy pasta, the Momo, some crazy something or another like that. Uh, Slender Man, TikTok is a tool of Satan in order to destroy life. I don't, I don't even really know what it is. I've seen a little bit of it, but I've had bunches of people saying, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, you have no idea how vile, how perverted, and it gets your mind deeper and deeper thinking about things you ain't got no business thinking and talking about. This young man, his family was atheist. And they raised him all his life to say, there's no God, there's no God, there's no God, there's no God. And that boy got sick. And he got some kind of disease and he was dying. And he's laying there in his bed and he knew he didn't have long. The doctor gave him up and he said, Mama, I'm scared. He said, Mama, I'm scared. I don't want to die. I don't want to die, Mom. And she said, it's all right, son. Just hold on. Just hold on. Everything's going to be all right. He said, but mama, I'm scared. What, what's going to happen to me? She said, nothing. There's nothing out there. There ain't nothing. You just, it'll, it'll, it'll be done before long. You just hold on. She went out and his daddy come in. He said, daddy, I'm scared. I'm scared. He said, what's wrong? He said, I'm scared. I'm dying. And you kids, you need to realize, you, we all could die. I could die tonight. You could too. You, you get this idea that since you're young, you're going to die way, way years down the road. While I've been up here preaching tonight, there's somebody your age who's died and went into eternity. Your age, my age, all of us. So I said, uh, he said, Daddy, I'm scared. And he said, son, just hold on. You know everything's all right. Just hold on. Don't worry about it. Your life is over. Just hold on. He said, I'm scared. About that, he went out and his uncle come in. He said, I'm scared. He said, just hold on, son. Hold on. He went out. His mama come back in. He said, honey, everything's going to be. I said, mama. He said, mama, I'm dying. He said, mama, I'm scared. He said, you tell me to hold on. Daddy told me to hold on. And my uncle told me to hold on. He said, mama, what am I going to hold on to? And that's the question that's going to hit every one of you someday, someplace, Sometime, what am I going to hold on to? And that's when you're going to need Jesus, buddy. You're going to need him more than your next breath. Because we don't know, y'all. We really don't know. We don't know how long we got. We don't know how much time is left. I don't, I don't, I hate to, to show you what I'm getting ready to see. What I'm going to show you is disturbing but it's reality. There's not a person in here tonight that knows you're going to get home alive. None of us. Oh, you shouldn't talk negative like that. Why? It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. There's not a person here tonight that knows you're going to be alive this time tomorrow. Not a one. Not a single one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you something here in a minute that could happen to anybody here tonight on the way home. Your mom and dad might be the best driver in the world in a car accident. can take you out just like that. We don't know. Ah, that ain't going to happen. You don't, that's what everybody thinks. That's what everybody thinks. You know what? When it comes time for you to die, you're going to need Jesus, okay? Go ahead and get them for me, brother. Let's look at this tonight. You don't know when death will strike. You don't know. You just don't know. You see, these young people here didn't know that they wasn't going home that night. These young people here had no idea that they was going into eternity when they left that evening in that sports car. You're going to see an accident right here in which a person loses their life. The last second they ever lived. Watch. <laughs> Every 
every minute that happens. Oh, you say you shouldn't scare people like that. I challenge anybody in here to show me one thing I'm saying up here tonight that ain't scriptural and is not true. It can happen to any one of I'm not about you mamas and daddies too. Once in a while, we need to face reality. That person had no idea that they'd be dead in the next five minutes. We don't know that either. You shouldn't try to scare people. I'm, I've got enough sense to warn you. It's true. It could happen to me tonight. Look at this. That's what happens when you die without God. You go into hell for eternity. Forever and ever. And you don't get out for eternity, brother. And I'm not talking 10 years. I'm not talking 100 years. I'm not talking a, a thousand years. I'm talking about forever and ever and ever and ever. You need Jesus more than you need to be popular at school. You need Jesus more than you need a friend. You need Jesus more than you need to make straight A's. You need Jesus more than anything here tonight. You need him. You need him. You need him bad. You need him bad. You watch. That's what happens to these young people. Oh, Brother Danny, you don't know when death will strike. We have no idea. Watch it when they go out into eternity. Hell, and there's God. There's the Lord. And then you don't get out. You don't come back and say, God, I, had, I wanted to do this. God, I need more time. God, I need more energy. God, I need more stuff to do. Lord, give me another chance. You don't have another chance. And it don't matter how good a driver you are. All you boys you're getting your license, watch this. It don't matter if you're the best driver in the world. Here's what can happen. Parents, you ought to appreciate me doing this. This is the best driving defense course you've ever heard right here. Show them what can happen. Listen, a, to a car ain't a toy, kids. It ain't nothing to play around with. You're messing with 2,000 uh, 2, pounds of steel and metal going down the highway. They tell me that a car, if you could drive a car, a small size, the size of a, a Honda Civic, that size car, if you could drive it through this building at 100 miles an hour, it, it weighs 18 pounds. I could take my foot and kick it over. At that speed. It's almost, you know, when you get going 100 miles an hour, it's almost like you're just skipping down the road. Watch this. Here's what can happen. Jason, I want you to get a song here. See that? Didn't even know where it come from. And you're in eternity. What's this? These kids are going up the road, cutting up and hollering. You can hear them guys driving. Then, whoa, watch this. What? I'll pass over here. I'll pass over here. Watch what happens. <laughs> Never knew what if. Never knew what if. See that? scream, watch this car, comes across the medium, right in your windshield, just don't know, don't die in your sins kids, don't die without Jesus, you know why young people need Jesus, young people need Jesus for courage and protection, young people need Jesus for contentment and satisfaction like I was preaching a minute ago, and young people need Jesus for security when it comes time to die. You need the Lord tonight. You need the Lord. You need the Lord. Look at here. Sin is in your heart. Give me just a little bit of light now. Sin is in your heart. And it'll wind you up in the lake of fire one day. That's fine, please. Take your life devil will laugh at you throughout eternity. I'm going to tell you, you ain't going to point your finger at me one day at judgment and say, 
Danny, you didn't tell me. I'm telling you right now, you need Jesus. Y'all girls, you need Jesus. You need him bad. You need him bad, kids. You need the Lord bad. You know, if you don't know you're saved, get in this altar tonight and say, God, I want to know. They've got people all over this church that can, can take the Bible and show you. Well, don't, don't play around. Don't mess around. You say, well, I'm young. Yeah, I know. So is these kids. It happens every day. You need Jesus. He's playing. Let's stand. God's speaking to your heart tonight. God's speaking to your heart tonight. Let's bow our heads, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to ask you a question. We need probably some soul winners and some adults ready to come and pray. God's speaking to your heart here this evening. If he is, if he is, if he is, I'd get out of my seat and I'd make my way down here to this altar. And I'd say, I don't care what nobody else says. I don't care what nobody, I'm man enough. I'm woman, boy, girl enough. I'm going to stand for the Lord because I know I need Jesus. You come on right now. Go ahead, brother. You come on right now. Let's pray. Amen. 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 He's come all on. I Amen. Need. You come on right now. Come on. Come on, kids. That's right. That's right. Come on, kids. Need some, some of you girl ladies pray with these girls. Come on. Just get out of your seat and come. Come on, young man. Young lady, don't you be afraid. Don't you be scared. Come down here and get your heart right. Come on. One of you ladies. Need your lady over here, please. Each time Amen. 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 On Amen. This friend, yeah. I can rely yeah. You come on tonight. To come on. I'm over here to pray. Right there. As life goes Amen. By, Amen. Amen. Let the Lord help you tonight. Let the Lord help you tonight. Come on, young people. Come on. Hey, you ain't too cool to get right with God. You're not too cool to get your heart right. You come right now. Amen. Amen. Me Amen. You come on right I'm now. Amen. Me. Come on. Amen. You come right now. That's right. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Get your heart right. Time and time again. He's, He's my, my soul. soul. Amen. You come on right now. Inspiration. Amen. You come on right now. You come on right now. You come on right now. Let the Lord help you tonight. Hey, you can leave here tonight saying it don't matter what happens. I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. And I want him to help me. Come on, that's right. Others are coming. Others are coming. Come on, y'all. Back here in the back. Over here on the side. You come on, get down on your knees. Amen. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For Amen. He's a Woo! friend. Amen. A friend Thank God. That's Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Amen. Friend. Hallelujah. I can read my Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Get down on your by. knees and get some help from the Lord he's tonight. Lord How about it, Mom and Dad? How long has it been since you just poured your heart out and got down on your knees and cried and said, God, help me, help my home, help my kids, help my, my parents, help my family. That's right, come on, help, amen, amen, woo, glory to God, hallelujah, amen, amen, glory to God, amen, time and time again, yes, amen, y'all pray, come on right now, come on. Come on, Inspiration, right now. my heart. Consolation, he's my everything. He's all I need. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. You need to come. You better nail it down here tonight. You don't find this much out there in the world anymore. There ain't hardly nothing like this left. You better get in while you can. Better get in while the getting's good, oh, brother. He's a but one of these days it'll be over. A friend that's, that's right. Amen, y'all. Amen. Amen, everybody. On Lord this God. Friend, Amen. Oh, yeah. I can Amen. rely Amen. to be Amen. my strength. Amen. As life goes Amen. by, he's my Amen. everything. Praise God, hallelujah. He's all. Praise God, hallelujah. I need. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Say it. He comforts me when, I, when I'm weary. Lord of God. He says every pain. Thank God, hallelujah. 
feels my every longing. Yeah. Time and time you see, you're going to face again. the Lord one day. He's my soul. Amen. Inspiration, my heart. Amen. Consolation, he's my everything. Amen. Amen. He's all I need. You might be sitting there tonight and say, Brother Danny, why did you talk mean about that rapper a while ago? Because of what he said about Jesus. That's, Jesus is my best friend. I'm not going to let somebody talk that way about Jesus. And you shouldn't either. What if it's your mother that there's laughing at, making fun of? You're not much of a person if you won't take up for your best friend. He's my best friend. He saved me from hell. He's the only person that ever loved me enough to die for me. You better believe if they jump on him, I'm going to jump on them. Amen? I didn't start it. You attack Jesus, we're going to get you. Because he's our best friend. He's my Savior. Right? Will you let the Lord help you tonight? Will you? Some still praying here this evening. Glory to God. Amen now. Praise God, big boy. Amen. Hallelujah. Your heart's right? Are you standing there tonight and saying, in the back of your mind saying, I can't go up there and pray because my friend's at school and we're supposed to do this Friday night and I'm supposed to do that. That's a devil putting that in your head. You don't even know if you're going to be alive Friday night. Better make sure you're right. Better make sure you're right. Better make sure you're right. Thank you, brother. Now listen. If you don't know that you're saved, up here just one second, Brother Jason. Uh, if you don't know you're saved, grab somebody's hand, whoever brought you, I'm begging you, don't leave this place tonight. You say, well, Brother Danny, I prayed and I prayed and, and I don't know and I'm confused. and I don't, How do you even know you're saved? You know, the reason you think like that is because you've been sinning. And the devil's got, you know, sin makes you doubt. That's what makes you doubt, sinning. Get your heart right. Ask the Lord to forgive you and cleanse you. Get your sins all forgiven. And then start all over again and you can be sure. Okay? All right. I want a little more light, please. And I want every one of you, if you're under 21, don't you come up here and stand behind me. We're going to pray for you. Come on. Hurry right now. Go ahead, Brother Jason. All your little ones in the front. If you're under 21, get up here. Amen. Come on. Stand behind me here. That's enough. That's a little bit. Too much. Amen. All right. No. Oh, Lord, one of these days. Y'all can be seated. All right. All right. Amen. Uh, Brother Derek, Brother, y'all, uh, Brandon, count these, count these uh, from right here that way and right here that way. Uh, step up here a little bit here, boys. Amen. Amen. See how I many we got. Uh, uh, now, what we're going to do, we're going to pray for you. We're going to ask the Lord to help you. How many of y'all got to go to school tomorrow? Raise your hand. That's most of you. I, I, you have my sympathy. I feel sorry for you. I served my time and got out. That's what you get for being young. That's your punishment, school. Then when you get old, you know what your punishment is? You have to work. So you're going to get it all your whole life. You better wait till you get to heaven. Uh, that's right. Ain't that right, y'all? All right, how many we got? The whole, all the way? Okay. okay. All right. There's some hid back in there. We're close right at 70 kids here this evening under 21. That's a blessing. All right. Now, we're going to pray for you, and I want all you out here tonight to pray for them. They need our prayers. So I, know, I mean, you know, Lord, we, the worst we heard was when John Lennon said something about the Lord People went out and burned their Beatle albums and everything. That little perv I was talking about a while ago, he'll probably come out this week and say he didn't mean it so he can still make money. Uh, but because uh, everybody's jumping on him. But listen, people, the devil don't ain't their friend. He's out to get every one of them. He would destroy every one of these kids if he had, he had his way. So lift, let's pray for them and put them in God's hands, okay? Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless these kids. That one that's fighting a hard battle, Lord, I pray that you bless her or him. 
that one having trouble at home, I pray you bless her or him. I pray for those that are having trouble at school, that you bless them. I pray for those that are having maybe physical trouble, I don't know, or mental or whatever. Uh, I pray that you'd help them. Do a miracle in every one of them's heart here tonight. We'll thank you and praise you for it. God help them make up their mind like little David. They're going to go and be brave, stand for you at school, home, community, wherever they go. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay right where you're at. All right, we got uh, almost 70 of y'all here tonight. Probably do count the other little ones. Y'all want to grow up to play the piano like Luca? See, when he was little, he didn't play. Now, uh, you want to you wanna, uh, ride a motorcycle like Dax up there? Uh, he raced all over the country, Red Bull and everywhere. And uh, You want to you wanna, uh, grow up to be a, a great fisherman? Who's a fisherman? Ethan's a fisherman. He's also a basketball player, soccer player. All handyman, all kind of stuff. You want to grow up, play the piano like Kerrigan? You want to grow up to say, you know what? Well, then make up your mind right now. I'm going to church. I'm going to church every Sunday. I'm going to church every Sunday night. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to serve the Lord. Life, life ain't easy, y'all. It ain't easy. You're going to get the snot knocked out of you more than once. So you make up your mind you're going to serve the Lord and do right, okay? All right, Jeff. We got to say right where you're at. We got a treat for you. Now, I got a surprise for you tonight. And the surprise is you ain't getting nothing. That's your surprise. See, you thought you was going to, and, but I surprised you, didn't I? No, seriously, we do. We got some scriptural, we got some Bible scriptural stuff here for you tonight. So I need, uh, Jeremy, where'd you go? Um, I need him. I need um, uh, Brother Mike, a couple of men, good men here. Put it right here in the middle, right here in the middle. Y'all are going to come down this way, and you are going to get a Pepsi. Glory to God, made in the Carolinas, brother. Made in the Carolinas. Best drink of our side water. And we are also going to get a Reese cup. And Big T will get the first one right here since he said his Bible verse. There you go, Big T. Where's Frank? There you are. Come on, Frank. He got the first one last week. And Frankie, he loves Pepsi and he loves Reese cups. I keep them hid up in the bedroom. You know, he said, can I have a Reese cup? And I say, no. And then I start feeling guilty. I say, yes. Uh, and I give him one. All right. So you're going to get one, Frank. Let's get them ready here, man. One Reese cup, one Pepsi for each child. Only one each. And they ain't not the same for you old people. Y'all don't need them. Uh, they, uh, Reese cup and Pepsi. And we all get going. Okay, you ready? All right, let's ask the blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good service we've had here tonight. Thank you for all you've done for us, all the kids that got saved, got right with the Lord. I pray that you bless uh, this food we're about to eat and our fellowship and let everybody get home safe. Lord, bless we all get ready for next week in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I forgot to ask, who, 